And uh, George Mooney has always said the view of a children's playground from this window gave him the initial inspiration for the series that finally became The Bass Street Kids. Initially, of course, it was entitled When the Bell Rings, rather much when the clock strikes four out they pour, and he, he obviously got considerable inspiration from just looking at the kids dashing around the playground. So there's a great war going on between the pupils and the teacher. And the, the pupils don't always win, that's the great thing. And the teacher wins occasionally. Much to his surprise. But it's, uh, it's so daft, it's so... Uh, <laughs> it's good, it really is good stuff. My, my grandson loves it. He puts his nose in the book and it's, he's sold on that strip for almost a day. But last time I spoke to you, you didn't really approve of, of children being naughty too much. Uh, being shown to be naughty. But then there is a punishment. There is a, a moral. Uh, there's, there's, uh, yes, there's all. They don't get away with it. I mean, if they do something really naughty, then there must be a punishment. And kids appreciate that. Isn't it? At the time, I read somewhere that um, children had powerful eyeballs, 16 times more powerful than adults. I had no idea whether that, whether that was true or not, but they certainly they were powerful because they never missed anything. And I could put a tiny microscopic little extra gag in a corner and they would write in about it. In Bash Street, I portrayed teacher as ineffectual. He could never master the kids. And yet in cartoon terms, he had to be a strong character, had to be a strong presence on the page. And I made him very tall, very bony, very thin. I gave him weight, and I used archaic symbols like the mortarboard. And his black trousers, the black mortarboard, were sort of solid black. And I surrounded him with little artifacts that would bring the attention to him in one set in 1961, the circus set, where he's been trundled off in his car by the kids to the circus and he's passing his own house. There's his wife in the window looking remarkably like teacher with the moustache and so on. There's the homework books piled up in the dustbin, lots of other detail, that kind of stuff. So I was always bringing attention to teacher. When the child bought the Beano, with its tuppence, and this was one of the things about the being no, as compared with books, was accessibility. A child could afford tuppence. The crucial thing was that it became the child's property. The individual copy became the child's property. It could come back to it again and again in the privacy of its own, the privacy of its own bedroom. And that's why it could spend the time going back again and again and looking, searching for little gags that had missed the first time and savouring the faces.